Hi right, YouTube, how's it going? Uh, this week's video is about this PV milestone <clears throat> and a few other things that I found out. PV was a, as an American company originally and it made amps and uh, speakers and uh, PA systems and stuff like that and they decided to get into making guitars because they thought they were selling, selling a lot of amps then we'll make guitars to go with the amps. So they started making Originally, they made copies of Fenders, so the Fender P based the Fender Jazz. In the 80s, they decided to, it was costing them too much money to make guitars in the States. So they said, did what Fender did, and they kept the high end guitars made in the States, this was in the 80s. And they'll send the kind of same idea as Squire, they'll make a Squire version, the slightly cheaper. Uh, outsourced and they went to Japan. Strange enough they went to the Matsumoko factory. Uh, but you get them in Japan, Indonesia, Korea. Uh, this is a Korean made one. And I, I think it comes from the exact same factory as what's on the Squire. Korean Squires come from. And also Samok. I think it's a, a Samok this comes from. I'm not too 100% sure. But when they went to Japan, and they seen what the Matsumoko factory was building. They seen a base that my mate Mad Malkus uh, put on his YouTube channel, which I'll put in the link below. And when I seen it, the first thing I asked him was, is that a milestone, a PV milestone? Which obviously he said, no, it's a, a Washburn Force 4. And if you look at the body, it's pretty much the same. Slightly different with the, the horns, the cutaways and stuff are slightly different. His, his is more kind of... But base, if you put this body up against a P-base body, from the top tip of the horns to the base, it's pretty much exactly the same as a P-base. The only difference is the cutaway. The Force 4, I've got deeper cutaways, plus the neck recesses into the body further so you can get further down and get a stability in the neck because the weakness of the neck is that way so if you drop this it's going to, if it's going to go it will split the body which has happened <laughs> I know some people Malky will tell you he's got a guitar that's done the exact same thing somebody's dropped it one time and it's actually split the body that's the problem with having so much deep cutaways so this one Obviously, the cutaway, still bolt on neck, stuff like that. But washbone, but a bit more wiser than quality built. <clears throat> and they actually set the neck, the neck in further. So it's got a lot more stability. <clears throat> but it's very, it resembles the washbone Force 4 with the shape and stuff. Washbone Force 4 is a far, far, far more quality guitar than this was. And even it's it's like par with the the high end fenders, and that's and the bow quality when I played it. It's, oh, it's got a lovely neck on it, body binding. Oh, it's, a, it's a nice guitar. But this is just PV's version of the Squire. This is their Squire version because they've got a high end American made model, which I don't think they do anymore. I think PV are pretty much the American, the US PV is. Out of business, they don't, they don't do anymore. The only guitars that come from PV are now Japan and uh, Indonesia and Korea. So this probably came out the same factory as one of the Squires. That's <coughs> there's no doubt about it because the quality is is the same. Uh, so no doubt it came out the same factory, maybe Samok or something. But what they did there is they kept what. Like, what is referred to as the, the Japanese uh, crossroad adjuster, which is the wheel at the end of the fretboard. A lot of Japanese guitars uh, have got that. <coughs> Some of them have obviously got the, the traditional, not traditional, but the, the ones at the top of the headstock. But that's a kind of Japan, a, a kind of 70s Japanese they have for a, quite a few 70s bases that have all got that wheel. Basically, just take an end of Allen key, stick it, and then that's what adjusts it. <coughs> Does it make a difference? Maybe because it's 
it's adjusting for the thickest part of the neck, so it's getting more, you can get more torque on it to, to straighten your neck, if need be. Uh, a lot of, I've seen a lot of guitars that I've got the billet adjusters and it splits the first fret because uh, you're putting force between the neck and the fretboard. So what happens is the bullet goes down and then just starts spreading. I've actually seen some crack here where it's forced in because somebody's cranked it that much. Uh, but as long as you look after it and it's, you don't over adjust it, it should be fine. But that is, you could probably crank on that for quite a bit when you're getting more, you get more torque towards so you don't need as many turns, you know what I mean? Because it's it's putting the force straight on the flat part of the, the heel of the uh, neck. It's not allowing for this, this is quite thin here. So you imagine all the force of these strings are going on this small surface area, whereas back here, it's a large surface area. That's why a lot of fenders and the reissues, they all adjust for here, because that's a bigger surface area. So it's less less amount to straighten the neck uh, <clears throat> and the rods are totally different as well but it's a nice mm. guitar this is going up for sale or swap probably in uh, the next couple of days i love pbs as you probably could tell i've got a couple but it's just no my shape it's no my style i don't really but i just wee bit of history of pv so they, they sent them to uh, this one's a Korean made, they've got Indonesia company, they don't make them in the States anymore. I think, I'm not too sure if they make any in Japan, because you get kind of high-end ones that are like flame maple tops and all that, and they've got veneers and binding and stuff. You used to, I don't know if you still get them. Uh, the other way you can tell as well, uh, the cheaper ones, where this bit here is here, there's actually a scalp there on the kind of higher-end ones. Like the kind of the high end milestones, they've got a kind of scallop here, and sometimes the uh, the headstocks are painted the same colour as the body. So this is the kind of cheap one, but sounds pickups are quite and are amazing in this. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? Oh, the reason somebody's asking me the other day, uh, the reason why some guitars have a skunk stripe. Fender have adopted that for all, 90% 90, 90 of I've, I've got a Squire there that's not got a skunk stripe but 90% of Fenders have all got skunk stripes but they adopted it, there's the only reason you need a skunk stripe on a neck is if it's a solid maple neck which means the fretboard and the neck's one piece so basically they've milled the whole neck including the fretboard out one piece of maple put a radius in it, slotted it, put the frets on it. So the only way to get the truss rod in it is to mill down the back of the neck and slot it in from the back. And that's how Fender adopted the skunk stripe. So rather than just doing the skunk stripe on all solid maples, because they started making solid maples and they made separate fingerboards out of maple and then separate necks and then put them together. So they make them look the same, they put the skunk stripe and then they just adopted the skunk stripe <coughs> as part of their kind of signature base but obviously they've no patent it so anybody can do that, any guitar maker can do that but that's where the skunk stripe comes from but the only reason you need it is if it's a solid maple neck where the fret, the fingerboard and the neck is one piece that's where <coughs> Fender got the idea from uh, so I'll let you see this See, this is this is going up for sale or swap probably the next day or two. Uh, don't know much yet. Preferably swap because I'm more kind of trying to buy them. They're basically you know, since it's Christmas and I've kind of I kind of go I've got a bit of an addiction. So so right here, so the top top string is uh, drop D. So I'm not going to play too much. My legs killing me because I'm standing up. I did have to see there, but it's a pain in the ass.
Spanish guitar. Uh, no high end, probably the same quality as a Squire. But obviously it's not got the Fender name, so people are all really wanting it. So that's you find that a lot as uh, people want a Fender or they want a Gibson. And as Malky would say, and if you watch these videos, uh, it, there's guitars out there that you can pay quarter of the price for that are just as good, if no better, than Fender. Uh, they're just no Fender or Gibson. Uh, Washburn is one of them, obviously, they've gone up in price because they're, they're really sought after Washburns. Uh, but there is guitar makers out there. Aria is one of them. Aria guitars for the 80s are, are, are the same quality as a Fender, a proper American Fender. Oh, they're made the quality of them. The only difference is the wood. The wood comes, the American guitars, the wood comes from America. Japanese guitars, the wood comes from Japan. Uh, if you ever watch any Japanese uh, carpenters and stuff like that, their woodwork is amazing. Amazing. If that's what they can do to a chair, you think what they would do if they made a guitar. So, I just. <coughs> do somebody as if you don't there is people who don't like the kind of the norm they don't like fender shape or Gibson and this would be ideal for them it, it says the quality is made exactly the same as a squire <coughs> pickups are decent pickups uh, I've had them out when I first got it it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work the volume wouldn't work it always was a loose wire I actually traded it for an Ashton, an Ashton one by fifteen cab, and the guy got a, the guy got a better deal than what I did. Uh, guitar's good, but th that cab still sells for a lot more. Than that's good dollars second hand, and the kind of reason why I did it was one I've never had a milestone, and two it's still it's in it's in brilliant condition. This guitar, brilliant condition. Uh, the only issue is it's got a slight crack in the finish on the horn, and that's it. The still even got the original tags on it for the shop on this the heel plate. So I did have a tag there, but for me to go off. The machine heads are, are good quality machine heads, nice thick steel. Uh, uh, close, they're closed at the bottom, so the the bottom of the, the elephant ear doesn't come out. <clears throat> strings on it are just basic strings. I've never put, I've never put any uh, rope sounds on this. Bridge is heavy. It's pressed steel, but it's thick pressed steel. It's not a fender bridge, but the fender bridge is quite thin. This is quite it's pressed thick steel. Knobs are nice quality. Scratch plate is a kind of cream rather than white, but I think that's what you do the age. For some reason, it's got one of the battery, do not put the bin battery stickers on it, I don't know why. I think, for some reason, when they import guitars, they think that the pickups are batteries. Uh, but that's what that, well, that's what that sticker is. Well, you, you do not put the bin sticker, that's for batteries. Uh, so they put on this, so it says in the back, Melstone BXP Black, seal number BOF13698. So it'll be the 13th of the 6th, 1998. So this guitar, uh, 
Yes. Uh, 20, 20 odd year old. My maths is shit. And it's got a serial 005922. Aye, that's 98. 98, 2008. Aye, aye, 20. Fuck hell. Aye, 22 year old. It's good for us. And for 22 year olds, it's never had any fret work done yet. Uh, I cleaned the frets up. Slightly dings the first and second, but I. Uh, Fell them out. <coughs> nice bit of rosewood on the, the neck. Fretboard. Nuts. Nice. All the guitars I get, I set up myself. All them. Uh, I set them the way I like to play them. Uh, I love these guitar. So, I've been up for Sailor Spock on Gumtree or Facebook. Uh, Pop that as a video up as well. Put a link. I'll put a link to Mad Malco's page who's got the four, the Washburn Force 4 which I've done these guitar and as I said if you watch that then watch, look at this you can see the similarities in it I think their bodies, for some reason it looks wider but that's what I thought his was, it's really nice guitar yeah so that's the the PV Milestone BXP a wee bit of history in it Skunk Strike, why that's there on a Fender. Uh, if you read Fender's book, they tell you that that's why they put that Skunk Strike on for solid maple neck so they can get the, the truss rod cover in and then they just adopted it. Uh, the only thing I think Fender has uh, copyrighted, and I don't think they've done it right, is the headstock shape. There's, that's it, that's the only the only thing they've done is the headstock shape because you've got other guitars from the kind of 80s or sometimes 70s and 80s are called the uh, uh, lawsuit eater and they've got I've got one that actually sits underneath behind that camera uh, for East Germany that's classed as a lawsuit because the, heads, the headstock's exactly the same as a Fender exactly the same uh, Hondo did it as well they've got a lawsuit they call it lawsuit eater that's what they call them, in 70s, 80s. So there you go, uh, PV Milestone. Hope you like the video. Like and subscribe, tell your pals. Uh, once you get more guitars and I'm doing more. Like it's better, I'm doing more playing. Uh, standard, I can't put for some, I don't know. It's, I don't know what's wrong with my playing now. I'm just kind of put it off with my leg and stuff. Uh, yeah, so, well, I've gone.